Hey friends, my name is Brooklyn Lindsay and this is Linda and you're watching Grow Curriculum Deep Dive for the Summer Discipleship Activity and Event from Grow Kids Volume 6. For the next few minutes, we're going to give you a big picture overview of what you can expect with both of these resources, but we're also going to take an in-depth look at some of the ways that you can get specific and some tips too, some things you don't, definitely don't want to miss. So Grow users, this deep dive is designed to give you a head start in planning and preparing for this upcoming quarter. Um, but even if you're not a Grow user, we love that you're here and that you're checking this out. And we hope that the things that we talk about will be helpful to you as you run your own discipleship and events in your ministry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give you an overview first of the discipleship activity, and then we'll follow that up with some tips. And then we'll look at the event overview, and then we'll give you some tips about how to do that one as well. Let's just start out by taking a look at my story, which is our discipleship activity for the summer quarter. The Grow Discipleship strategy is built around four spiritual habits, spending time with God, spending time with others, using your gifts, and sharing your story. And if you've been using Grow for a while, then you'll know that every summer we focus on the spiritual habit of sharing your story, because this is usually the time that churches are involved in mission trips, outreach programs, camps, and BBS. So it just makes sense to talk about like sharing your story during the summertime. So Linda, why don't you tell us a little bit more about how this discipleship activity works and what it has to do with sharing your story? Yeah, I want to say it's probably the hardest spiritual habit for kids, um, sharing your story, because I mean, partly because they're still learning what the story is, and they haven't really discovered what their story looks like yet. So this discipleship activity is the perfect way to help kids start thinking about this. Um, the way that they're going to be doing that this quarter is by journaling and answering questions about themselves, their journey with God. My storybook is an actual scribble journal that we created for you with fun prompts and scribbles and just creative spaces for kids to write and draw their responses. So you can print these out and distribute them to kids and have them fill it out on their own, just kind of as like a fun little thing, like a little take home, or you can make it more interactive and do it together in a more guided way, which I would recommend. Um, so if you look at the activity instructions, you'll see some talking points that we've included that you can share with the kids as they fill out these pages. So that means what you can do is you can structure it so that you do like a page or two a week for the entire quarter. And so that'll be you'll spend an entire quarter talking about sharing your story. And this is also helpful because then you can include like younger kids, non-readers, and the leaders can help guide them through it, write for them. And it'll just be a really great way to involve kids of all ages. So for each prompt, the fun part is there is a tiny takeaway that they're supposed to jot down at the end of the page. And on the very last page of the book, they're going to compile all these words like Mad Lib style, and they're going to create a draft of their story. And it's called the story of me. And so they can just kind of have this little paragraph memorized. Anytime someone says, hey, what's your story? They can just have this on file ready to go. This discipleship activity is like all my dreams come true. Linda, <laughs> the, from the Mad Libs, scribbling and all the little ways to share. Um, I think it's going to be really great. So now that we've talked a little bit about what this resource is all about, um, let's just throw out a few tips to help users be able to figure out like what they can do, how they can customize it, um, and how they can best use this thing. All right, tip number one, set this up as a human library event. I love this because I love libraries. I'm guessing many of you do too. Kids love libraries also. So after kids complete their workbooks, try out this follow-up activity where kids can create a display of to showcase the stories that they're telling. Um, you can even do little author readings where kids share the story of the page out loud. Yeah, I think it'll be really fun. It'll kind of give off a science fair kind of vibe, right? You can have them bring in little artifacts or pictures to kind of elaborate and create this display. And it's cute that they can be little books on loan for the people who are there. So I love this 
event idea. So please do that for your discipleship activity. Um, tip number two is to make it look good. And I know that sounds kind of weird, um, but the workbook itself, I think, should speak volumes, no pun intended, about how this activity is going to go. So kids get excited when they see a cool looking book, right? Like not just like handouts. Um, and so we don't want kids to feel like, wow, this is homework, another little academic exercise. And I know we don't all have the resources to print everything in color and have it professionally bound, um, but the aesthetic will be very helpful to motivate kids. And so we encourage you, I mean, there's nothing wrong with stapling it, you know, whatever, um, however we normally do handouts, but feel free to just get a little extra with this one so kids can be like, wow, this is an actual book. Um, and it's little things like making sure the pages are printed double-sided, um, make sure at least the cover is in color if you can't print every page in color. And if you can, that would be great because the pages are so cute, you guys. Uh, and then you can bind it with like a spiral binding or like just a three ring report cover. And if you have thermal binding of Available, try that out or let kids do like a book binding event where they can all just kind of bind it together however they like in fun ways. Um, I think that would just help make this even more special and maybe it's a keepsake for them. And this is also a really, really great opportunity to get some parents involved. Sometimes parents really want to be involved and they're not sure how to do that hands on with kids, like teaching kids or being a part of, you know, something discipleship wise. So for them to have a hands on activity, this might be a great opportunity for them to just buy some books for kids in advance. Um, and you could get to know them a little bit better by doing that. Yeah. Um, OK, so we've gone over our discipleship activity. Let's take a look at the super fun event that we've got planned for the summer. Are you guys ready? Let's go. This summer, Grow Kids <laughs> is bringing this very fancy event called Cardboard Party <laughs> to all of us. And it's exactly what it sounds like, um, a party with lots and lots of cardboard. Um, I personally think there's something really fascinating about a cardboard box and how most human life forms and animal life forms seem to be obsessed with it. So we're letting them get wild and creative with all sorts of cardboard themed activities. Um, just as a few examples, like some of the stations that we have lined up for this event, we have a drive-in movie and cardboard cars, uh, cardboard couture fashion designing experience, oh my goodness, that's so cool, um, build a cardboard race car and race, a cardboard Lego station where they can have fun just stacking and building cardboard boxes and cardboard things. And there's a whole bunch more. So we, we really think you're going to like this event just because it's super easy to do and kids are going to love figuring out how to do all these things with cardboard. Yeah, what's cool about this is while we were in the middle of developing this event, um, I found out that there was an actual event near me called Cardboard City. And so I took my kids and we checked it out. And it was basically what we're doing here, but they had all of these really cool cardboard creations on display. It was works of art. And I thought that is so cool. So I took lots of pictures and it really inspired a lot of the writing here. So I think you guys would also find it equally fascinating and your kids all the more so. And I think what's really special about this is that it is an event for all ages. Um, it'll just be a fun time for families to participate together. I mean, they have to because you guys, cutting cardboard is hard. Right? Um, so as you go through this, you'll see um, there are some places that will require a little bit more adult supervision than others. Um, so just be very wise about the resources you have available, including the helpers you're going to have. Um, so we've set up 10 different stations in this event. And as Brooklyn just named a few just now, I can't really tell you which one's my favorite because I think they're all so different and fun, except that they all involve cardboard in some way. Um, the activity instructions should help your volunteers set up and manage these stations. Um, but here are some helpful overall pointers. Um, first thing is is campaign really, really hard in advance for cardboard donations because you are going to need a lot of cardboard. And even for someone like me who orders stuff online all the time, you know, one person cannot fund all the cardboard boxes you're going to need. So ask families to bring in cardboard for months in advance and just have a little collection going. Um, so that'll be really helpful for you. Um, second little advice tip 
nugget is to let leaders handle the tools. And I know this seems really obvious, but sometimes we forget um, where things are and we, we can't let a box cutter get into a little kid's hands. Um, so what we ex what we suggest is set up stations for the more heavy duty tools, like a hot glue station or like a cutting station where kids can ask an expert at the station to cut something for them or glue something for them and then bring it back to whatever station they're at. So kids don't have have to handle them and also be kind to these experts who are at these stations and provide goggles and gloves and other safety gear so they are safe. Um, whenever possible, because their cardboard again is a pretty hard material to work with, whenever possible use very thin sheets of cardboard that you can cut with scissors or even brown craft paper can work in some cases. So check those out. Um, and then create a cat gallery on one side of the room so kids can place their finished creations there and then move on to the next station. So they're not like carrying little bulky cardboard stuff from station to station. Um, and then lastly, as the name suggests, it is a party. So blast some fun music, serve pizza because that comes in cardboard boxes. And yeah, just have a ton of fun before you start worrying about the big mess you're making. <laughs> yes, yes. And speaking of mess, um, you may want to just recruit a couple of volunteers to help you with the leftovers at the end. Some kids may want to take some cardboard home, some of their art home, some of the creations that they make, but you may end up with a lot of cardboard on your hands. So maybe have a little plan to take that to the recycling bin after um, or recruit someone to do that for you. Um, okay, so that's just a little tip I've got, but we've got a few more tips about this. Just a few more things that will help make cardboard party extra, extra awesome. Linda, what you got? Yeah, so our first extra tip <laughs> is to include a preschool corner, include a preschool corner. Like you might have been thinking, well, how do I do this with really young kids? We've got you covered. So what we've included in this event guide is some ideas for how to set up cardboard themed activities that are more age appropriate for the preschool crowd. I mean, honestly, you can just throw kids a bunch of cardboard boxes and they will have fun with it because it's just it's just really fun like Brooklyn was saying it's really like cardboard is magical that way kids just have fun with it but um you can do some more directed activities like you can do a star search which is where they hunt for cardboard stars using paper towel rolls as telescopes which is really cute um you can do a digging zone where kids play with kinetic sand which you set up in cardboard trays you can do a color your castle activity where you just give them like a blank cardboard castle or just a big box and they can doodle all over it and have fun with it so and there are a few more ideas in there so don't forget to check that out so once again it is an event for the entire family family. Yes. Um, another little tip for you is to recruit cardboard specialists. You can call them your cardboard crew. You can call them like the genius. You can call them whatever you want to call them, but like give them like maybe a cool like workers apron or something, but designate a group that can go from station to station and just like give a helping hand and give a little power boost to the kids when they're making stuff. They can also temporarily sub in for a station leader if they need to take a break or, you know, if a kid needs like one-on-one -on -one attention, the cardboard specialist and lend a hand. So yeah, just recruit a few of those. Yes, I love this idea. It's going to be so fun with all these adults helping the kids with their activities. So all the attention they're going to get. That's awesome. Um, and our third tip for you is to scale it up or down. We always encourage you with any of the stuff from Grow to just make it work for you. And we truly mean that. So if you're at a small church and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to do all of this, don't feel pressured to set up all of these stations and you're going to be like, I don't know how I'm going to make this work. You could choose two or even one of the station ideas and you could still make it an all-day event like for example you can take the cardboard drive-in movie event and just show a full-length movie like in the event we say show like a short movie so kids are going from station to station but this one you'd be like hey create your cardboard car get in your cardboard car and let's watch a movie together and that can be a whole that could be a whole event so don't feel like you need to do all of these things and kids are gonna love it regardless um or you can choose to go all out 
and starting with decor, you can like cardboard up everything by co covering all your furniture in craft paper and giving it that real cool cardboard paper aesthetic. Um, and we do have a ton of really, really cool ideas and more tips for you inside the event guide. So make sure you check that out. And don't forget, however you decide to do this event is going to be a memorable one and everyone's going to have a blast. If there's a place in this event where you want to create um, a Jesus connection or some sort of spiritual habit moment, you can definitely do that. You can customize this however you want. This is basically just the event that will give you all the fun you need to do the things you want to do with your families, which is to connect with them and to help them grow. Um, I think that's pretty much all we've got. I wanted to say thanks for all you do. It's been a year and some of you have been ready to have a little break so if you're going for it and you're doing this cardboard party thank you because you've been doing a lot all year and this is just icing on the cake so thanks so much um we do want to hear from you we want to hear how are you using this resource show us your pictures like make sure you post those in our facebook community we would love to see them a lot of other people would love to see all the ways that you make this your own it helps them out too so let us know how it's going and thanks so much for being a kids leader kids love you and are grateful and we're just grateful for you too yes and stay tuned for volume seven we have even more fun discipleship activities and events coming up for you like Brooklyn was saying we really appreciate what you do for your kids and your families and your church in general and so we just want to make sure we're creating a ton of more helpful and innovative resources that you can take to your churches so thank you for being here thank you for loving us we love yes. you have a wonderful yes, summer Happy summer, everyone. 2023. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs>